Welcome to Tales of Blue, where I'm joined by a former player with over 330 first team appearances to his name, an FA Youth Cup winner with City, a Wembley goal scorer, a 1988-89 promotion winner who oversaw 13 managers including caretaker ones during his spell at City. Welcome to Ian Brightwell. So Ian, your City debut comes in the 86-87 season, but before that you made a first team appearance at Wembley, March 1986. And actually a Wembley goal scorer for the City Apprenticeships who beat the Chelsea Apprenticeships 2-1. We did, yeah. Um, I remember before the uh, before the match, um, or before the, the full Members' Cup final, um, they said there was going to be a five-a-side before so the game. So did you know that before, or just as you went down on the day? Yeah, we, we, we knew on the day that we were going to be playing a, a, a match and uh, playing against the uh, Chelsea lads, yeah. uh, the apprentices. Uh, and it was fantastic because it was the first time I'd been to Wembley mm -hmm. and played on the pitch. And the last time, actually, <laughs> <laughs> I did play at the Millennium, but I never managed to get on at Wembley apart from that. And uh, I think we won two one. And uh, John Bookbinder, yeah, God bless him. Um, he's unfortunately passed away, but uh, great lad. He got the other goal. But yeah, good memory. I'd, uh, I'd almost forgotten all about that. But it was good to play at Wembley, and I, I love this kit. This, you know, the black and yeah. black and red stripes. That's probably my favourite away style, you know, the black and red, um, and that badge is fantastic as well. Yeah, they, yeah. they used the coat of arms for all finals then, they stopped yeah. now, but um, they used to always use that, and this was City being City, knocked up quickly yeah. by the club, This it's, it's not embroidered like most of the shirts are, which you could buy as a replica as well. But, yeah, yeah, so it was a good, uh, well it was almost a very good day because we were losing the first team lads, I think they played. Man United the day before. Yes, correct me two, if I'm yeah, wrong. Played at Old Trafford on the Saturday. Yeah, two two, and then the final. Yeah, and Wembley. Unfortunately, uh, Kenny Clements had he got injured, mm -hmm. so he missed out on a on a Wembley final. I think Kenny will have played there before at Wembley, um, but still really disappointed for Kenny. Uh, Stevie Redmond played, yeah. so Stevie was still in the youth team at that set, uh, stage. So a lot of them lads got to the FA Cup youth final, nineteen eighty six. Yeah, where they wore this shirt. Yeah. What well, you remember is that game beating United in the final. Played at Main Road, wasn't it? The, yeah, the played at Main Road. Game. To be honest, the, the hardest game we played was Arsenal in the semi-final. Right. They they were, had a good side. So uh, Paul Michael, Merce and Michael Merce Thomas. and Michael Thomas. and Gus Sees was there. They had a really good mm. good side. It was when George Graham was um, very successful yeah. as, as a first team manager. And that was a tough game. But we got through on penalties uh, in the semi-final. And then we played United at Old Trafford in the first leg. And we drew one apiece. Lakey got a penalty. Yeah, uh, it was a tough game. But when we're coming back to Main Road, we 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 knew we were. To be honest, we knew we were better than them. Good crowd that day for a youth game as well. Well, or that yeah. Evening, sorry, they said it was uh, twenty thousand, but you know, on the, I think it was a lot more than that. You know, it was yeah. cash on the on the gate, and uh, I'll make Bernard. I think that's the first time that statement's <laughs> been made, hasn't it? I think yeah. it was might have been a little bit more than that. Yeah. So your debut comes at the start of the eighty six eighty seven season. Yeah. Where again this same style shirt. Home to Wimbledon, is that right? Yeah. First game of the season, nineteen eighty six, eighty seven season. Uh we'd come off winning the back of the youth cup. And I remember the week before, um the we we'd done pre season, we'd had a couple of uh, pre season trips to Switzerland and one to, mm -hmm. to Spain. Uh Billy McNeil was manager, Jimmy Frizzell assistant. And Billy McNeil came to me the week before the match, he said, listen, no matter what happens, you will be playing on, sa okay, so on you Saturday knew. in the first team. He said, you will be playing, he said, and also you'll be playing in the in the games after that. Um, so just go out, relax, enjoy it, and just go and be yourself. How did you find the transition in from the youth team to the first division? It was a big jump straight away. It was, yeah, yeah. Especially against Wimbledon. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, Fashion who Dennis Wise. Yeah, you know, all, all that crew. They had a, again. They had a really Besson, They had a really good side. It was um, like physically. It was uh, not just because it was Wimbledon, but physically everything was a lot yeah. quicker. They, they were they were grown yeah. men. You're playing mm -hmm. against grown men. But what I would say was the the system then. You'd play in the reserve teams, and in the reserve teams, you'd be playing with you know a few of the Tarte, better youth yeah. team players. There were some lads that were coming back from injury from the first team, or lads that were. Mm. Um, coming, um, you know, just trying to knock it on the door of the first team. So, so you a could good be grounding then the reserves. Yeah, so or... you're playing with first team 
players, established players, you know, players that have played for, for years and also playing against. I remember playing the uh, first or second reserve game and you used to play the games at the stadiums. Oh, okay. It's not like today where they have a separate ground. Yeah. We went to Anfield and Kenny Dalgleish was player manager, so he was getting some fitness. So he played against yeah. Dalgleish. Jan Mulby played in it. Um, um, Craig Johnson. So it's kind of like sink or swim then for the young lads. Exactly, you yeah. Your feet or... It was, yeah. And you had to learn and, you know, they wouldn't mess about with the players you're playing against, yeah. you know, if they'd let you know. They'd... So you had to learn quickly. And I, I think that's, that is a good way mm. to get that transition between youth team, um, EDS now, is it? Yeah. And the first team, because it's a big jump. I know the lads go out on loan, um, but to be in your own environment and playing with the, you know, your own yeah. your own players, you, you learn so much. So the Wimbledon game, do you remember the score from that day? Yeah, three one. Um, Goal scorers. I don't really know, on I'm spot. sure Simo scored because Paul, Paul. I came off after about an hour sixty five minutes. Trevor Christie got a couple, I think that day yeah, was yeah. his debut. And and Simo came on for me, and I think Sim, Paul Simpson, I think he set him up. So um, yeah, I just remember it's three one. And then the game after we played Spurs away, mm -hmm. and then Liverpool away. Yeah. So the first three games were, you know, it was a real test. So it turned out to be quite an epic season. Billy McNeil sort of left yeah. around, I think it was September, October time. Yeah. Um, Jimmy Frizzell takes over. A lot of youth team players, David White, Paul yeah. White, make debuts. But it ends in relegation. Jimmy Frizzell took the team to the end of that season. Then yeah. Mel Machin came in for yeah. the start of. The 86 87 season, yeah, which would have been this shirt. Yeah, remember that one? A few familiar names on there, yeah. As well. I can see, I mean, Jimmy Frizzy on that. We've got Andy Inchcliffe, Paul Lake, Ian Scott, uh, Paul Molden, uh, David White, um, Paul Simpson. Um, Simo did play in our youth team, he was a year older, but he'd come through the through the ranks. Um, I mean, we had a, a, a good youth team. And what game jumps out, springs to mind when you see that shirt in? Uh, probably the Bradford game. Yeah. Well, that, season Bradford, after. that was the one. Yeah. yeah. Season after. Yeah. It, it's got to be because when we played in in that match, we knew we had to get a result, mm -hmm. and uh, we got it in the end. But it's only when you look back now, I didn't realise how. So that's how close to the end it was. Trevor Morley's shirt from yeah. that day. Trev. Well done, we, Trev. We, we should have went up the week before, really, shouldn't we? Three, we nil, yeah, three, three nil up at half time against, against uh, Bournemouth, Bournemouth, and then yeah. Threw it away. It would have gone up that that day, but yeah, that's what what a memory that is. And uh, Trev, to one to your shirt Trev. that day, yeah, because there's pictures of you, I think, aloft without a shirt. <laughs> I don't know where it is. <laughs> I'll tell you what I did. I, there's a picture. I had uh, my shirt had been taken off, or th I'd thrown it uh, to one of the crowd, um, and there was a guy that got me on his shoulders. So I was on the yeah. shoulders, and someone had given me, you know, the inflatable that's bananas. Right. So I had a banana. And I did see the guy that was whose shoulder was on. He came up to me. It was last season, oh. and he tapped me on the shoulder. He said, uh, "Do you remember me?" And I was like, well, "Go on, tell me." And what then he told now? me, I lifted you up. and then I looked at him. <laughs> yeah. And he told me, and I did. Yeah, because I, I think that picture made the picture. Manchester Evening News. I think yeah. it was on the front of that picture. But just quickly, um, on that Morley goal, something that's always sort of uh, when he scores that goal. He runs off, he celebrates, but not one other player goes to him to celebrate the goal with him. So I don't know, maybe everyone was a bit tired. I think it's <laughs> relief. I, I, and I didn't, up until recently, I didn't realise how close to the end it was. Yeah, 86. Yeah, 86 minute. Um, Bradford had a couple more chances and Paul Cooper was in goal for yeah. us. And Coop's made a couple of good saves just before. And then there was a, a fan, that, uh, a City fan that ran on, mm -hmm. went up to Lakey. And he'd heard that uh, Crystal Palace were yeah, winning four yeah. nil, and they had to win by four or more. So of course we all knew about that. So yeah, it ended up a, a good day, but it was uh, nearly another typical. Yeah, it's nearly one of them. Yeah. Just jumping back to the eighty six eighty seven season, Ian. I forgot to ask you about this one. This is actually your shirt you okay. wore against Manchester United, yeah. first live ever televised derby at Main Road. Your yeah. first experience of a derby. Mick scores the bullet header. Yeah. I think Frank Stapleton scored a header yeah, he in them. But if you notice, they, they produced a larger sponsor, Phillips, yeah. because it was going to be on TV. Yeah. What do you remember of that derby, the atmosphere? It was it was incredible because I'd grown up as a City fan, I still am, watching the derby games. So, but to go out and experience it, and I was on the bench to start with, 
Um, but when I got the chance to come on, mm -hmm. it it was in, incredible. And the pace of the the game, it was it was frantic. Um, you know, Brian Robson was playing central yeah. midfield for them. He was England captain, so I was up against Brian. Um, and then I was I looked down at Brian Robson's uh, boots. Remember, he's England captain, <laughs> yeah, Manchester yeah. United captain, and he had a pair of these New Balance boots, and they had. Big, the, 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 end, the end on it was falling off and <laughs> you, you could see I didn't repair they were almost falling apart and I, I couldn't stop looking at him he said what are you looking at son <laughs> I said well, what about your, your boots and he just looked at me and I won't swear but he goes the effing comfy son yeah, yeah. and off he, off he trotted but I, I say it was just bizarre to see the England captain with these boots. He obviously loved them to bits, oh, and you know yeah. they had a, a fair boot boots. count, mustn't they? Them yeah, well, he was a top player. But Mick's going to Mick's header. That's probably the best header I've ever seen. Mm. Mick McCarthy, great header. S Simo crossed it, and yeah, incredible. A few debuts that day for City. John Gibbon, Kenny, oh yeah, Tony Grealish. Tony Grealish is also no longer with us. Yeah, he was wild. Um, Tony was like, and Ray Varane, oh, perhaps. Yeah, another. Uh, yeah, he he wasn't afraid of anything. <laughs> Tony Grealish, he was. Uh, I think he came on for Tony. I think he might have got injured. That's why he yeah. ended up coming on. Um, but remember, he was throwing himself about. Yeah. He was getting the yeah, balls yeah. kicked everywhere up every part of his body. He just didn't flinch. Got up, you know, proper, proper pro, proper hard man. But what about these shirts, Ian? Do they recall these? So this is from the eighty six, eighty seven. Yeah, which came again eighty seven, eighty eight, but with a new sponsor. Yeah, brother, it was. Um, yeah, did the players did we, pay much attention to these kits at the time, or was it just the case? Well, we did. I mean, that, this was it? really unusual. Mm. Uh, black and red, but yeah, different yeah, design. Right, yeah, and to be honest, the, the, what I remember most about this, we got on an end of season trip to um, to Australia, and it was a six a side tournament indoor. And um, they took these shirts out, but they weren't allowed to advertise in Australia at the time. Oh, okay. And they did blank out right. uh, the sponsors. And uh, yeah, there was us, there was City, Knott's Forest, and Arsenal went out. And there was um, uh, there was an Australian team, can't remember, it had been Sydney. Yeah. And there was, a, I think it was a team from Japan, but it was, uh, it was a good end of season trip, that was. Something the yeah. players would look forward to. After yeah, the season. season trips are good because you were very relaxed back then. Yeah, you know, not too much pressure. Um, you know, you could Castlemaine sponsored that yeah. one in Australia, <laughs> so you got back to your hotel room and there was a, a crate of yeah. Castlemaine and everyone's. Uh, Mark Lewis was room. telling me the story. He was man of the match at like, that Spurs game you mentioned yeah. earlier on, and Tottenham was sponsored by Holston at the time, so the, yeah. the prize was a crate of Holston pills. Which <laughs> he said they were nearly finished by the time. They were. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't take them long. That <laughs> well, there's no one else from the. Well, two seasons that ran. Yeah. 88, 89 and 89, 90. Yeah. The deck chairs. The deck chairs. Um, that wasn't my favourite shirt, I've got to ad admit. Um, but it was... Uh, did uh, Clive Allen score in that? Yeah, I was just going to say to you, they got, got, that shirt always springs to Clive Allen's goal yeah. at Chelsea and that's what, back in the first division. That's what springs to my mind as well. Um, great player, Clive Allen. You know, he's, he was unlucky at City, he didn't get... Yeah, I mean, when he saw him for the fact he was yeah. one of the, the big name forwards at the time. I think certainly from a from a finishing point of view, you know, in, in training, you'd watch Clive in training, yeah, and he just made it look so easy. And him and um, uh, Wayne Clark, he was another yeah. one. Be, be, you know, every, every time if they were in front of goal, mm. you knew it'd be a goal. So promotion secured, back in the first division. Yeah, eighty nine ninety, we start the season at Anfield. Yeah. I didn't play in that um, that first game at, at Anfield, um, but I, I made my way back into the team. Um, we wore this against it was the in the five one game. I was gonna say yeah, yeah. Um, but that's one of my favourite shirts that mm -hmm. particular style because we were so you know the team was we had the, the young lads were coming through. We'd had a couple of se or two three seasons experience, and we were getting. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're playing some good stuff. Yeah. Uh, Mel Machen uh, got the sack and Howard Kendall, Absolutely. Peter Reid uh, came in. And we had uh, two or three, you know, pretty decent seasons. And um, I said, I was... Yeah, starting to get a bit bigger then as well. Yeah, they were a bit baggy, weren't they? I remember the shorts got bigger. You know, the, yeah. they came to baggy shorts and compared to the, you know, the 
the Unity ones and the 1986s, they were really short, short shorts yeah. and tight, and you'd even roll them over yeah. just to make them a bit shorter because that so, was a fashion. There's a lot of youth team lads in that 5-1 side. Yes. So what do you remember of that day, the atmosphere? Yeah. I mean, we haven't sort of played United for a few yeah, seasons. Yeah, I haven't played them for a couple of years. Uh, there was uh, Stevie Redmond, Andy Hinchcliffe, David White, myself, uh, and uh, Pate Rado. But um, they had quite Blakey. a expensive symbol squad. United. Well, they they just signed Pallister for mm -hmm. a couple of million or yeah. around about that. Uh, Paul Ince for big money at the time, and one of the Wallace lads. I can't remember if it's Ray or Danny Wallace. Or Danny. Room, yeah. Um, so they had a good side. Um, Brian Robson didn't play that day, mm -hmm. which I think did help Absolutely, us. Yeah. But they still had a team full of internationals. Um, our team was, we were, I'd say the five young lads, mm -hmm. we'd all played England under 21s, but no one was uh, full internationals at that stage. And the other lads were really experienced, good pros, mm -hmm. Paul Cooper in goals, Gary yeah. Fleming right back, Brian Gale, uh, then midfield Bish, yeah. uh, Ian Bishop had signed, fantastic player Bish. Yeah. Too short a stay that season. Yeah. The change when Howard came in. Great was player Bish was, team. David Oldfield. And uh, Trevor, Trevor Morley, so we had, you know, good, uh, young and complimented by the experienced lads. And don't forget, uh, Jason Beckford as well. Yeah. He was Jason. on the bench that day, yeah. Jason. I think Gary Megson was part of the squad. Yeah. Also, no yeah, because Megson was. Player. Yeah. So that, that season, Ian, does this shirt spring to mind? October the 14th, 1989. <laughs> it does. As the I'll City fans rub their eyes as a. Uh, I think that's is that the last time this one came it was out. The, it was the only time it was yeah. ever worn. Yeah, we got absolutely four nil hammered. And when we got to the the Highbury, had you we, seen we this kit before? Well, the, no, the players because it was I, originally designed to be worn at Sheffield Wednesday on New Year's Day is it, right, to avoid okay. the kit clash with Sheffield Wednesday. But I say we got we got to Highbury, beautiful old marble mm -hmm. floor changing rooms, air heated floors, you know, really nice. And we we walked in the changing room and they're thinking, <laughs> are we in the wrong changing room? Like we walked out. <laughs> Um, yeah. So yeah, the first and last time, and I'm I'm glad really because that isn't a city coloured kit. No, it wasn't. Uh, it's very, yeah, it's great for your collection because it's so unusual. It's a sort after shirt. <laughs> yeah, now, yeah. Know, yeah. And a few of the youth team. Michael Thomas played that day. Paul Mason. Yeah. So it was a few of the youth team lads that you played yeah, against come through. through. And also this season, so we had three away kits that season, which was unusual at the time. Yeah, this one came, which was only worn yeah. five times. It's just the same sort of colour as that one. Really, yeah, the solid. I much preferred this one as the, the away kit rather than the, the stripy one. Um, and again, there's some, you know, some good memories that came from, you know, from this period of of, uh, of City. I think things were, were looking up. Yeah. I do believe if Howard Kendall had have left and gone back to Everton, I think City would have won a trophy. I think so. Yeah. Before well, we did in I think uh, a lot of fans would agree. He was building a great mix of experience yeah. and youth team players. Wasn't they? But the the, yeah. the call off um, yeah. back home was. I wonder now, God bless his soul, yeah. Howard Kendall, whether he would, would regret because it was never the same when he went back to Everton. No. Whether he may regret. I think his, Everton decision. was his love. Yeah. You know, and you can't take that away from him. He's uh, he's a brilliant character. Yeah. And to be fair, Peter Reid's come in. He's mm. he's done a he's done a good job. And uh, very similar to Howard in the way they they coached and way they way they managed. Yeah, uh, Reedy was probably a little bit more fiery, okay. but with both of them, you knew exactly where you stood. Yeah, you know, if you didn't give hundred percent, you knew about it. But if you did, you know that that was okay. But they they'd help you, you know, on and off the pitch, and uh, they got a really good team spirit. Mm. It wasn't so much about tactics and strategy. Uh, back then, not from what I remember anyway, yeah. you know, it's, it's more or less, you know, we'll do the set pieces on a Friday. Um, you know, you know, this is who you're picking up, this yeah. is who you're picking up. And, you you know, basically you should know the rest yourselves. And um, again, you, you're learning, learning on the job, but yeah. sometimes it's not a bad way to do things. And sure. it worked for people like myself and the younger lads at the time. Because you're playing with some experienced players. Peter Reid was still playing. Still playing. Yep. Adrian Neath, Niall Quinn had signed. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some ex Alan Harper. Yeah. And uh, some uh, Wayne Clark, some good good pros there that had won trophies as well. So you're learning from them. What about this one? Another one, one season one. There wasn't worn too many times. Yeah. Do you recall that one? I do recall it. one. I'm lot trying of... to think where we wore it. Villa Park, David White. Yeah, White, he got the four, four goals. Four goals, yeah. 
distinct memories of that one. Yeah, another good player, Whitey. Great finisher. He, he started out on the, the right wing uh, during the youth team. Yeah. And he was very effective going down the right. And he could, you know, he could cross, he could score goals. And he was strong. And Formed a good partnership with Niall Quinn. Yeah. And he played for on. And then Reed is kind of mixed him and put him up, up with Quinny. And they had a really good partnership. It was, uh, he got a lot of goals between them. And um, we were... We were hard to beat at that, yeah. that time as well, or relatively hard to beat. There's some good finishes, um, fifth, a couple of times. Yeah, fifth, fifth, fifth. Was it seventh or eighth? But it was, yeah, it was starting to look up. And then, um, I don't know, probably just, uh, uh, just well, it'd be after Brian Horton came, but yeah. Brian did really well. Well, the Premier League comes, 92, 93. Yeah. So, that's the yeah, shirt yeah. from that. What do you remember that open? We were the first team to play on yeah, Monday night Monday football night. with the ball coming out the sky. And yeah, as players, what what it the was. whole new ball game was the slogan, I believe. Did you go down to the filming of the advert? For, yeah, there was a few players. Yeah, went down for that. How did that come yeah. about? Well, Peter Reid uh, phoned me up a couple of days before. He says uh, there's going to be a advert for the yeah. Premier League. Uh, the place that you're going, right? So I said, <laughs> right. Well, where do we need to go? So he gave me the address and. I went down there and it was a good day that was down at the was you, did they get a, did you get a fee uh, yeah it was pretty good as well yeah they, they sorted everything out and there was uh like vinnie jones was there yeah. and um david hurst at uh, Sheffield Sheffield Wednesday, Wednesday, yeah. Peter beardsley uh, mark wright was there from liverpool uh, gordon jewelry tottenham yeah you know, some good big names but it was a it was literally just for the day yeah uh i, I drove down and then drove back at, at, at night okay. Uh, but that going back to the the first televised game, it was it was bizarre really because when mm. you know you're going out and you're seeing the fireworks going off and yeah. you know, everything kicking off, football was never the same again. <laughs> yeah, and one thing I do remember is the, uh, the 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 cameras where they run around and, oh, okay. and chase you. Yeah. You know, I'd never seen one of yeah. them before. Uh, Player um, cam, I think yeah. it was as a fan you God. could get, couldn't you? And it's uh, yeah, we drew one one, one one. Andy Sinton scored. And Fitzroy. Did Fitzroy score for us? Was that Fitzroy? Simpson? No, it was David White scored for us. Oh, White, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, sorry, yeah. Because Lakey made his yeah. comeback game. Yes, that was it. Yeah, in the middle. So spot. Fitzroy was for this the season after. So the following ninety two ninety three, Ian was the last season. It was normal one two eleven. Yeah. The ninety three ninety four. Uh, obviously, you knew this lad a long oh, yeah. time. Top man, Lakey. How good was Paul? Different class. He was. He was. Uh, everyone asked the same question. Yeah, sure. Uh, they were. You know, Steve Redwin was different class as well, by the way. Uh, and then you got Lakey. He, he could do anything, really. Yeah. He started out on the at the left wing. He's ended up... Captain I think he, when he came up. back, he was up front, I think. Where he yeah, he, he could literally play anywhere. Yeah. And uh, But played like well. He was skillful. He was strong, aggressive. Mm -hmm. He could tackle. He could head it. He could do everything. Yeah. Um, well, it's 30 so, years, over 30 yeah. years since he played, and he still spoke about... In such high regard, yeah, as the quite way Colin Bell so. was for years and years yeah, after. Quite rightly so, because you know what could have been, and it's so unfortunate. You know, we're still friends and we uh, still see each other, and then you just like look and you think, what could have, yeah, what could he have achieved as a footballer? I mean, he's achieved a lot outside of football, yeah, absolutely. Um, but as a footballer, he could have, yeah, slot uh, in today's game, Lakey, yeah, easily, yeah, easily. So, do you, what do you remember of this shirt? And um, talk about players. What about this fella? David oh, kid, oh, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Was it surreal I, to be at the club with your brother? Because he, he came. Yeah, he was, he was years two, after, well, three he? years younger than me. So I was, I was by the time David signed, uh, he, um, I was pretty much established mm. in the first team. But he soon worked his way through. Yeah. And he made his debut, I think it was down at Wimbledon. Um, yeah, I think it was, what, yeah. Away, they were, so do you know that link that you both first team debuts were against Wimbledon? I didn't know actually. No, it just right. occurred to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just literally just occurred to me. Yeah. But he, we were away, and they were there at Selhurst Park mm. at the time. But Dave, like, like he was totally different to me. He's six yeah. foot, you know, six foot three, six foot four, left footer, um, mainly a centre half. He did play quite mm -hmm. a bit at left back, but really a centre half. And he always talks about when he was marking Fash at the time, right, yeah. Fash the Bash, um, and he. Give Fash a bit, and yeah. Fash was like, "Well done, son. I like that." And uh, you know they had a good battle. Uh, I can't remember the, the, the score, but they had a good battle. But 
people like John Fashionu, um they'd they'd respect you if you okay, give yeah. them a bit. If if they knew they could walk all over you, yeah, they, yeah, they would. Absolutely. And they wouldn't have any problem in, in walking all over you. So another shirt from that period. Yeah. She has. Well, no one was maybe that went too early. A lot of players they sort of were moved on quickly. So there's a big turnover of players at City. Yeah. Sort of, sort of Again, because really it was, uh, I think, would it be Brian Horton? Yeah. yeah. But we had a lot of strikers at the time as mm -hmm. well, and he was looking to bring his own strikers in. Yeah. He brought Uve in, Uve Russell and Paul Walsh. Sure. Uh, Quinny was already there. But Shez, great finisher. Tidy, tidy player. Yeah, really, really underrated. Um, and he went and he had a really good career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Went to Norwich. And so did you pick up an club. injury in the, was it the, the 92, 93 season that kept yeah. you out for possibly a year? So yeah. the time you'd returned. Yeah. Really had been moved on. And Brian Horton came. Brian Horton came yeah. in, yeah. So it was then it was this style. Yeah. Sure. And again yeah. it started yeah, to get a bit bit bigger. Yeah, big and baggy. Yeah, I was uh, say I got injured, I snapped my patella tendon. Um nowadays it wouldn't have happened because yeah. I had this in inflammation in the Patella tendon, big tendon in my knee, probably for two months before it actually snapped. I think nowadays they would have, you know, mm -hmm. sorted it out early on, nipped it in the bud, and probably missed three or four games and been back again. But unfortunately, that, that wasn't the way it was back then. You yeah. Know, played on and played on. And I wanted to play. You know, I wasn't forced to play. Um, but I ended up missing a year. And by the time I came back, mm -hmm. Brian Horton had come along with um, David Moss as his assistant. And um, we were playing in this, and uh, it was. It was yeah, around March it, it, time. We were we were struggling a little bit for yeah. firepower, and then Brian made some astute deadline day yeah. signings. Yeah, Paul Walsh, Walsh came in, cracking player, Walsh and Peter Beagrin. Yeah, Uve as Uwe. well. I mean, it was really a great was... strike force. So you had uh, Walshy, uh, Beags, uh, uh, obviously Quinny was there, and they signed in the March. And I'd actually just got back in into full fitness and. Um, we needed, you know, we, we, we were struggling, but we needed something like 10 points yeah. out of, you know, eight or nine games. Um, and he brought the, these lads in. And mm -hmm. so I, I remember when I came back, I was playing, not a right winger, but like a right sided yeah. fielder. And he had Uve making runs for you, Walshy making runs, showing for you. Mm -hmm. uh, then Heart on his sleeve, Uve type oh, of guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Was yeah, he as passionate he was in like, training as he was? He was, yeah. Yeah, no, he was. He was. He was great bloke. Still is. He's a good player. Scored a lot of goals, mm -hmm. and he wouldn't heart on his sleeve. <laughs> we had a training session once. It was uh, down at Platt Lane, and okay. Tony Buck was still joining in because Tony had probably been he'd actually had probably been fifty five. Yeah. You know, so he was getting on a bit, and Uve had signed, and Uve didn't know right. Tony. Yeah. You know, was, and Tony was a hard player, as you as mm -hmm. you know, good player, and but hard as well. We're in a training session. Uve's gone up for red, and he's <laughs> give Tony Buck the. Right. And we're thinking that is the worst thing mm. you could have done. Anyway, Tony's got up. He's like wandering round, and he could just tell that he was looking yeah. for revenge. <laughs> anyway, five minutes later, Uve's took a bad touch. Whoosh! Tony's come in, the carted him up, up in the air. He's gone down squealing. <laughs> Tony's just got up, <laughs> jogged off. Welcome to England, son. Yeah, yeah. I'd imagine there's a few players who could tell a Tony Book tale. Yeah, Tony was a fantastic, uh, fantastic fellow, brilliant coach. Yeah, he coached us in the youth team with uh, Glenn Pardo, unfortunately he passed away, and mm -hmm. Ken Barnes again passed away. But great characters here. Yeah, to, to learn. I say between. Ken Barnes, Tony Buck and Glenn Pardo, the amount of players that they brought through mm -hmm. the youth team to play in the first team, or even if they went to uh, other clubs. Yeah, great it's, career it's for It's phenomenal, players. yeah. I mean, I could rattle off yeah. loads. And you know, so even in our age group, seven of us went through to play mm -hmm. in the first team. Even the year before, this would be like Paul Simpson, and yeah. Clive Wilson, and uh, 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 Jamie, Jamie Hoyland, yeah. John Beresford. Yeah, all great careers, yeah. Yeah, some great careers, and yeah, it was good to Earl Barrett. So the ground in these guys. Yeah. James, the lads. Yeah, I, I say Glyn, Tony, and, and Ken. You know, they took for no nonsense. Yeah. Um, but you, you look back on it now, you think they, like for, from a personal point of view, like they made me as a footballer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, they've, and, and as a character as well. Yeah. And they just taught you 
how to play football, but how to look after yourself as well. Fantastic. And on and off the pitch. Great, great people. So Brian's first full season in charge, he's building quite an attacking squad with mm -hmm. Summerby on one wing, Beedry on the other. Spurs come to Main Road and we've eaten 5 2 with this character in goal. The cat. Just seemed, to, <laughs> just seemed to be there forever, and he, yeah. didn't, he, he lost his place when TC came in. Yeah. But, um, yeah, he played that day, but a great character, Andy Dibble. Yeah, unbelievable. Um, what story springs to mind? I'm sure. Yeah, I'm not sure I can tell <laughs> most of them. I used to get changed next to him, like for training. Yeah. He was uh, next to me. And he was just, he's one of them guys that is funny without knowing right. he's been funny. Uh, cracking keeper. Mm -hmm. He had played for Wales and yeah. he'd come, uh, signed from Luton. Um, and he was just what we needed at that time. Um, and he was. Yeah, I think when the the back pass rule came in, that messed him up a little bit. Yes, yeah, um, because he wasn't brilliant with his feet, but was a shot stopper and a, a goalkeeper. He was as good as anyone. Yeah, he really was, and off the pitch as well. You know, he he um, he'd, he'd get players bonding. I'm sure. Did he like to swim in the canal? I heard a story of pre season oh, training. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a day like today. It was red hot pre season over at. Uh, um, the university training grounds yeah. and the, we used to do a run and he used to you go out there was loads of football pitches there you'd, you'd run out over over the canal there was a big lake you'd go over the lake and then you'd come back it's probably about a four or five mile run so we trained in the morning had a bit of lunch and then in the afternoon it we mm -hmm. said right lads you're going to do this run uh, Roy Bailey um, Roy was still running back then he was yeah. good runner Roy so Roy had set off and ahead and he'd, he'd go ahead and just point you in the right direction so we've all gone off uh got back showered where's dibs well i don't know anyway got to walk into a car who's walking down the <laughs> down the football pitches dibs soaking wet through he used to wear a bin liner pre-season he'd wear a bin liner under his wow. training kit <laughs> so you can imagine how yeah, yeah. how hot he was that was it was Bit old school, you know, sweat it yeah. out type of thing. So what's happened? Apparently, he got out there. He'd lost his way because he was that far back. Roy Bailey, Roy couldn't find him. <laughs> so Roy's thought, well, he must have gone back. You know, just turned back the way he came, which he hadn't. So he dibs. He's walking along the, the canal, thinking, the, thinking, well, how am I going to get back? <laughs> Asked the lady who was walking the dog, what, what's the nearest way back? She said, well, there's a bridge down there about a mile. And then you have to come back on yourself and you go go there. So I said, right, thanks. So he thought, well, I'm not walking to the bridge, <laughs> into the river, Just straight across, across, waded across, drenched, sweating, <laughs> about an hour after everybody else. But that was dibs. Yeah. You know, it was, uh, so whatever, we had a laugh on that for the rest of the yeah, pre-season yeah. and we still talk about it now. I don't think now you'd look across and see a premiership. No, I can't I'm imagine uh, right. Edison doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so another kit from that that season we had for two seasons, ninety four yeah. to ninety six. Keith Curl, the skipper. Yeah. What do you remember of Keith Curl? Yeah, good leader, Curly was. Um he was quick. Um I, I say a good leader more than anything. He, and and defender. Cracking penalty taker as well. Yeah. He'd take all the penalties. Um but he was good to have in the dressing room. You know, again we were a few years younger than him. Yeah. Um he was getting into his pride, he'd be he went on to play for England as well. Um, but Who was the Felan, quickest, Curl or Phelan, in training? There's a question that lot comes up on fans forums, etc. Oh, Terry Phelan was asked. Quite I think often. Curly. I think Curly. Like Terry was quick, but I think Curly would have. Yeah. Would have run it if they'd have put, they put him in for the. They used to do the hundred meter. That's right. Um, yeah. uh, challenge. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Curly was put in for us. I don't know how Phelan felt about that, but but again, F Terry Phelan, good player. Yeah. Uh, international player and a, and a character and yeah, he had a temper on him Terry did <laughs> which is great you know yeah a, a Manchester lad and the training uh, fiery with these lads in yeah training. yeah it was because it yeah. was it was 100% you know tackles mm -hmm. firing sure. and uh, most days you know it, it didn't get too naughty but you know mm -hmm. you, uh, you, you put it in I remember we played Tottenham first game of the season uh, it's probably 94 95 and Terry had just come back from the World Cup in America. Okay, yeah. So, and he was he was big into his fitness, and so he's saying, right, we need to drink plenty of water, which is right, mm -hmm. you know. And Lucas Aid had just taken yeah. 
uh, sponsorship. So there was these Lucaside um, uh, squirty bottles all around the ground, and someone had got a someone had got a knock. So we've all gone and got the a drink, yeah. having a having a swig. Uh, then the referee blows to start play again, and I was playing at right back, and Terry was was left back, mm -hmm. and I had like it was half full this Lucaside container. And the uh, physio was shouting, like, get it back on, like, Roy's shouting, get it back. So I've got it. Uh, I've launched it across as far as I could, and it's, like, spinning around in, in the air. And I'm thinking, that's going to hit Terry, that is. <laughs> <laughs> so, and he was, like, concentrating, like, getting ready to play, and it's hitting right on the back of his head. <laughs> of course, all the crowd, yes, yeah, all yeah. out at Main Road, it was Tottenham on the first. And he went absolutely ballistic, <laughs> like, you know, just for the embarrassment factor, because everyone had laughed yeah, sure, to see yeah. what had happened. And he didn't know what was happening. It hit him on the back of the head. But if you are watching, Terry, I wasn't aiming for you. <laughs> so, change of manager again. Yeah. Alan Ball comes in. This little fella signs. Oh, causes yeah. a lot of sort of divides opinion sometimes. Yeah. The City faithful. Um, yeah, magician. I think that's all you can describe Georgie as. He could do, he could do anything with the ball. Mm. It was all left-footed. So you think, as a defender. You know, or as an yeah. opponent, get him onto his right foot. But you could never do that. And he'd try every day in training, but his balance was so good. Mm. He'd like knock you off balance, and then before you'd know it, he'd got it back onto his left foot, yeah. and he'd gone. And he did it every single day, nutmegging people, well, anything, chipping goalkeepers, yeah. running past people. Alan, when we used to do the running sessions, Georgie would be all up the, always at the back. Okay. And... Uh, you know, as a fellow professional, I think, come on, George, you know, at least yeah, yeah. have a go. Like Anyway, Alan Ball soon realised if we get the balls out and do running with the ball, yeah. George will be at the front. <laughs> and sure enough, we got the balls out yeah. and said, right, run, you know, do your, do your runs. But we had a football at our feet and he was way out in front and he, yeah. do, he was quite happy to do it. If he didn't have a football at his feet, yeah. he wasn't too happy to do it. But he really was, he was, he was a magician. Yeah. And, I mean, imagine him... In today's well, you can say side. great player, wrong time maybe for us. Yeah, a bit later. I, I think the problem was there was no manager knew where to play him and how to accommodate okay. him at that time. Yeah, you know, check, um, tactics and um, you know strategy has, has changed over mm -hmm. the years. And at, at that stage, it wasn't really a formation because it's really four four two, maybe four three three or a, a three five two. Sure, and that was it. You know, there was no. Um, so I'm sure Pep would have found somewhere for him anyway. He'd have probably got him running a bit more as well. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a disastrous season, ending relegation on the last day yeah. of the season. We go down. Shirt stays the same for the, the campaign yeah. in Division 1. That's actually your shirt from yeah. that season in. Yeah. So 96, 97, everyone expected us to yeah. sort of, you know, come straight back up. But of course it didn't happen. A lot of big name players left. Yeah. Then start a huge turnover players coming. Yeah. Could you see what was happening then at the time or is From it... that um that first season, no. We we had we thought, you know, we could we were confident that we could get straight back up. Mm -hmm. Uh which didn't happen. Yeah. Uh Frank Clark was bought ball came in. Uh, ball went uh, quite early. Yeah, on ball. Steve Coppel came in for yeah, Steve Coppel a, a brief came in. period. Yes. Steve came in for three weeks and Phil Neal took Phil. over. Yeah. Then Asa Hartford. Asa yeah. was never going to take it, but Asa came in as a caretaker. And then Frank Clark came. Yeah. And Frank, um, he was very forward thinking. You know, he's bringing, by that time, nutrition and, yeah. and diet and that was in fitness. That was all coming into game. Probably started sort of early to mid. Results had picked up under Clark. We just couldn't yeah. get the consistency so, going. So we'd win a couple and yeah. we'd like lose a few. Yeah, we'd. Uh, we had high hopes of getting into the playoffs, but that didn't happen that year. But we thought, okay, yeah. Frank bought a couple more players, and uh, we went into the 98-99 season, and that was just a disaster. Yeah, as we all know. Well, you complete ten years at the club, then you? you have a testimonial game. Yeah. Against Sunderland, and we have a complete yeah. kit change to Kappa. Yeah. So this would be your final season. Final season, yeah. At City. Yeah, I'd, uh, I said uh, twelve seasons, that eighty six, eighty seven, and then mm -hmm. I left in. Uh, Joe Royal came in. You played a few under Royal. The last game, yeah, was, I did. I was, I think, Reading. Yeah, in Reading. March. Yeah, I was. I was injured and I couldn't get. I couldn't get myself fit. Yeah. Um. So, 
yeah, it, it, yeah, it was really disappointing. Uh, Joe had to get rid of players. Yeah, uh, I was out of contract. Uve Rossell was out of contract. Kit Simons was out of mm -hmm. contract. Georgie Kinkladzi was with us, but he he went off to yeah. Ajax. So we were kind of easy ones to to get rid of. Um, so I, you knew you could be going at the end of the season. I yeah. thought, yeah. Um, but Coventry had come in, who were in the Premier League at the time, and they offered me a contract. Um, so from a professional point of view, it was a good move because yeah. Coventry were in the Premier League and City were going down to the League One. Um, but from a personal point of view, I was gutted. Yeah. You know, I'd spent so much time there as a as a player and I'd supported the team. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd come up and seen uh, so much. You know, I'd have loved to have seen my career out there, but it, it didn't happen that way. Yeah. And it I, could I, have been Wembley, couldn't it, the following? Well, yeah. 98, 99. Um, but it's one of the... I'm, I'm proud to have played it, like league and cup games. It's mm -hmm. nearly 400 games yeah. for the club. So there's been that many players that can, can say that. And I'm just proud that I'm able to say that. And Absolutely. say because I love the club and say I'm working there now as an ambassador. Yeah. Um, and you're involved, Marion, with yeah. the former Players Association now as well? Yeah, uh, the former Players Association. Uh, this, they've, the, the lads that were on it, on it before, they were getting mm -hmm. a bit older. So myself, Joe Corrigan, guy Keith Hanby, mm -hmm. and uh, Ian Meller, we've, we've taken that mantle on mm -hmm. and we've had a... We've had a we had a dinner, we're going to have a golf day. Yeah, so there'll be yeah, a few events to, coming up. Yeah, so you can follow that on Twitter, can't you? They've got a, a Twitter page which we'll yeah, put out later. Yeah, we'll put out later. And uh, there's a golf day coming up in August, which will be uh, which will be good. I think they're having that at Dunham Massey. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're looking forward to that. And we're just really starting after the the two years of uh, of lockdowns and stuff. We're just getting back, back on our feet and hopefully go upwards and onwards. Good stuff. And I've got a couple of questions favourites for you okay you can answer, answer me as much as <laughs> these so i mean it might be a difficult one considering the length of time you're at city but favorite city teammate Oof, i saw so many uh players i, I think probably uh, probably something like paul lake yeah. you know paul lake david white uh steve redmond you know i think those those three yeah um uh, paul molden as well but these are paul, those you grew up with there aren't yeah they? so yeah and paul well all, all for those names I've mentioned there, but so this will probably match. be a silly question. This one, favorite city goal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to say I'm going to surprise you. You might think I was right. going to say the United one, which yeah. It is yeah, yeah, the one at Old Trafford. But I, I scored one against Leeds in it's about ninety two, might one ninety two, might have been ninety three. One of the four nil games. We won four nil at Lane Road. That's yeah, cool. I was playing right back and played. Two or three one twos. Like mm -hmm. I came out from the back. I played a one two with shares, and then a one two with with Quinny, and then managed to score a goal. So well, I think the United ones. The... How many times did you hear from fans over the years? I just wellied it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. Um, I could tell you the, the story about that if, if you want. Okay. <laughs> but I'd scored the goal, and yeah. after the game, the, the TV wanted a, an interview, and um, I can't remember who the. Might have been Jim Rosenthal. I can't yeah. remember, but they've said, "What? Um, what did you think of? You know, what were you thinking?" Anyway, the, I was thinking because what happened was Mark Ward got the ball. Mm -hmm. Lakey took a throw in. Mark Ward got the ball. He crossed it, and it deflected out to me. Yeah, the ball's coming to my path, and all I could hear was Stevie Redmond, who was playing at centre half on the halfway line, Old Trafford, full house. Yeah. All I heard was Steve Red. And in his Scouse accent, shouting, "Effing T W A T it." Yeah. Uh, so I did, and it went in the top corner. So I thought, I can't say that to ITV on this interview. Yeah. So, but the ball came across to me, and I just wellied it, and yeah, and that's and it stuck. That and yeah, stuck. and I'm glad I said it. Anderson Ward is there again. The ball laid back for Brightwell to hit it. Oh, what a great goal by Brightwell! A tremendous goal from the youngster who's only playing because Peter Reid is suspended. Would you say he was your favourite manager over the 13 altogether, including caretakers? I'd put three in that category Howard Kendall, Peter Reid, mm -hmm. uh, mentioned it earlier. Uh, great motivators 
Um, great, you know, with the, the, the team spirit. Yeah. Uh, honest people, and you know, they, we played some. We, we we did relatively well. We did pretty well in that period. And then Brian Horton after that as well. Yeah. Um, again, Brian, very honest, but straight to the point. He knew his football, still does. Uh, but he played so, so much attacking football, you know, with the uh, Summerby and and yeah. uh, Peter Beagree on the on the left and Walshy, Quinney, yeah, and Uve up front, and then young lads coming through the team. He's, mm -hmm. he's putting them Gary Flitcroft, yeah, and Stevie Lomas. It was a really attacking yeah. time. It was it was good. Good football and yeah, so Brian, Brian was, Brian was very well. unlucky to get sacked. Yeah, very unlucky. In fact, he, you know it's it's all history now, but it shouldn't have happened. So, who would you say was the funniest City teammate you ever had? Again, there's there's loads of them. Uh, Andy Dibble, just yeah. but he didn't know he was being funny. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if that counts. But uh, Tony Coton, yeah, big character Tony. Yeah, just funny, dry sense of humour. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he he could just. He'd make anyone laugh. Yeah, he would. He'd make, yeah, the, you know, the groundsman laugh, the the, the, the girls upstairs, yeah. and the, the manager laugh, and the lads laughed. He, he was just a big, big bit of glue, like so, Tony, getting people together. So out of all the shirts, seeing what would be your favourite City home shirt? I think that ninety or uh, which one was it? That one. Okay, there yeah, for two seasons. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Just because I thought I was playing myself, I was playing some good football. Mm -hmm. The club was starting to, you know, look like it was going places. Yeah. Um, it's traditional blue, but you know the city blue, but it's got a bit of a, a different design in it. And I'm just, uh, I don't know, just good memory. All of them are good memories. Yeah, sure. But I just do. I don't know, that's the one that jumps out. I think that's the one for me. Yeah. yeah I I, and also the the one that made me game yeah, over here. Yeah. So. These are one-word answers only. Okay. Phil Foden or Paul Lake as a teammate? Oh dear, come on. I know, come on, there you go, one word, <laughs> come on. Right. I'll let you off that one then. Main Road or the Etihad? Main Road. David White or Raheem Sterling? Dave White. Premier League or Champions League? Premier League. Your best position, defence or midfield? Both. Ian, it's been an absolute <laughs> pleasure sharing well, your tales of Boo. Thanks for joining cheers, us. Cheers, mate. Thanks for inviting me.